Right, tell me about your, your um, young days in uh, Kingston, early days in Kingston. Well, I'm a born Kingstonian. I went to Boystown School, where the great Carl Smith went. And, you know, most singers, man like her, their rivals, and the man there, passed through those places. Now, there was a singer named, a man named Mara Lanza. That was a singer that really inspired me. Because at, at the time, most singers in Jamaica tried to sing like Mara Lanza. And any of you can sing like Mara Lanza. You're, you're rated, right? So, that was a thing that inspired me. Then you have a singer named um, Jimmy Tucker, who was a fine voice like um, Curtis Mayfield, but his range was in the same Marilanza range, you know? He's a Jamaican. He's a Jamaican, yeah. He set the pattern, really, because this Lala Man thing used to win it up all the while, you know? And then, when I leave school and thing, you know, I start to check around, you know, them singers there. You know, like metals and, you know, the Lord Creator and the man there and, you know, them died there, they tried to get in, you know. It was really difficult. I do have the talent, you understand? But nobody for push me and all them things. Eh? But at some, some stage I get lucky. I remember the, that what gave me the inspiration, right? To really see what's about recording. I had a tune that I wrote and I take it to. Sir Coxon, Russell, and I said to me that, I'm telling you, um, the man who play the piano, I said, tell her you have to come back three years, come see me. What was the song? It was a tune about all them. And, um, you know, I take it to heart. And I said, well, can him talk to me like that? Right? And I go there, and I go to my mother, and she lent me a small change out of her partner money, and I man take it and buy a little guitar. When I buy the guitar, it never had a string on it. It's only the bass alone, and it out of tune. And I carried to a man down low clean. A man who do, you know, my, um, them kind of work, the woodwork, and tell him what happened. And I'm straightened out, straighten out the, 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 you know, the fret and thing, and put some string on the thing. But him couldn't tune it, and he couldn't tune it. So, anyhow, I used to go around um, a, a man named Baba. As I said, Baba was a man that inspired um, great men like um, Jimmy Cliff, Ken Boat, all of them man there, Joe White, many singers. I used to be a man who sing with um, a, a man named John Bego. John Bego is one of the greatest Jamaican um, drummer because he helped all the singers there. He even helped me establish one drop in Jamaica. She would see him all them, you know. And I take the guitar and thing to Baba and thing and guitar, Baba gave the guitar to Jimmy Cliff. And Jimmy tuned the guitar. And the man showed me two cards. And the two cards, I'm showing me like them two cards here, my player. Never forget it. He said, All right then, why can't I show you? I will show you of all the D, which this was the D, you understand? And I said, Put the finger so. And I said, um, And then when you do that, you try the, the D. And I he said, try them two there. And when you come back, I'll give you the next one. When I go back, in a couple weeks, he'll give me the, the G. And I saw it go. So why do not I just take the two card, with two, the two, the, the D and, 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 the, um, and the ear. I write this tune, create the beat around the whole line, where CM Cox and reject. So I had a pattern for it. I used to go down the beach, because I grew up with a lot of dreadlocks, you know? And me and Slim Smith and them man, and them tiny Slim Smith was in Unix, Technics, Technics. Technics was great groups too. I am going work with them man, I try to a great singer, and them like me, you know, couldn't get a blight. But anyhow, it worked out that Rasta people them say, well, where I got you, right? So we get a chance to um, a man named Joe Gibbs, came from Grand Talamobile at the time. And a friend of mine who knew me and Slim, and like how, you know, Kawhi always sing and them, the man that support me, so some tailor, right? And the, and the chap said, I'm a friend coming from Grand Talamobile, right? And we must write a song for him. So I remember I have this tune, you hold them. 
I remember one day that, that what proved the song to me was such a great song, right? I went to over Greenwich Farm to look for Bonnie Lee. I turned to Bonnie Lee, never having a label, you know? And thing and them carry me over over the other side of you know, in a, what you call it, the park like, right? And the man him say, Go for your guitar. And them bring this big guitar and give me this one tune me can me know about. Me I tell it, hold them and the Jimmy Cliff tell them the two card. Um start bust the card, man. I know everybody I dance. And I say, more time, more time, more time. Two card there. One drop. Give us a rendition. Well, you see the So get in the groove, I move those feet, feel good, feel good. I left and right, and east and west, believe me, believe me. Oh, no, 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 oh, your best friend is back in town again to get you on your dancing feet old thing old thing real cool real cool and you know the park real get at Rasta and from that day there I'm a new side of it well, the next stage, you no. Know, we did. The guy did come from Grand Tel Aviv, and we set up a rehearsal. And we go to a place up in Sambiro, I think Sambiro up somewhere in Crossroad, right? And we have Gladstone play the piano for, for, for the guy getting recording. It's As, Sambiro club. Yeah. I think it's either Sambiro or one of them club, but it's, I know it's one of them club, right? Sambiro. And I took Ken Boo with me as my friend and Slim Smith for sing the harmony. You know, the whole them. But choose a new thing, because it is, as I say, it's not a ska. You were going from, from ska to a slow rhythm. Yeah, because I say, Coxon turned me down, kind of a comic ska. That's why I'm turning the song down. He didn't understand what I was trying to sing. And I never really ever beat, make up feet. I just got it with the song. So I come, come up, come build up my own beat, you understand? Create the, the, the two card thing with Jimmy Cliff helped me there, and thing, and, and up to today, that is one of the only one of the only songs that's been created in Jamaica as a one drop. Think about it. And it's still playing. Yeah? So that song is a blessed song to all Jamaicans. Because no, you know what singers and musicians inspired what that song? And people sing the tune. And most of them don't even to give me the proper credit and put my name on it, says me, write it. Tell me about um, the, the feelings from your, from your, your, your mother when she realized you was a national hero in, in the sense that Overnight, you've become a, a national star in Jamaica. Well, I tell you something, right? I don't think my mother was surprised because my mother is one of the greatest singers I hear to. In time I hear her, she thrilled me. So she knew that there was something within my talent. But I think really what, what really impressed her, you know, is to see that I didn't, um, I didn't give up hope. Because the first time I went to a place named, um, there was a, a thing named... Um, Bajan is who stuff a thing, Virgin, an ambassador. But all of them singers that come to Alton Ellis, Owen Gray, all of them singers that are Blue Busters, right? And the first time I went there, I, 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 um, the, I get second, second prize. And it was two pounds. And when I take the two pounds to my mother, she said, well, all right, this is beginning. And she said, I'm going to buy two duck, two small duck. And the duck, them turned dozens of duck in the yard that people start teeth all the duck, the man. I tell the man, that was something. So the more I see the duck, the multiply. Was, that's the way I know, you understand? That's the same it's going to be. And again, too, I know that song was a godly song, you know. It was real, and it is. When I caught the tune, right, I was going up a place named Dove Street. And I walked with this tune here, as a dub, we carried some sound man to play it. And I, I was passing a fence, maybe too, too close to the fence. And a dog pushed his face through the fence, bite the dub, and him teeth going at the dub. 
and the dog run off of the dog. This is not a joke, you know. This is history. And the woman look out and she say, my God, she said that is a hit tune. And the tune did become a hit. I don't know, Kai just left the, she and the dog with the, with the, with the dog. Kai found him going at that, you know, said couldn't play again. Number one for about six months. Yeah, man. That tune is sell, man. And, 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 you know, as I said, you know, if, if, um, if Jamaica had um, were more musically, um, what do you call it, managed, right? That song could have really opened the way like Motown, you know, souls and all them things there. It should be really something that built on. And even today I'm sitting here talking to you, it is still my intention to pay back that respect to Jamaicans, especially the youths them of today, who are talented and need inspiration like I and I. Seems a lot of, lot of your songs are written out of um, experience. I mean, for instance, tell, tell us about the uh, shirt, the diamond ring. Give me back my diamond ring. Yes, well, Diamond Ring was a tune that um, I wrote Diamond Ring because of, um, you know, it was really a song that I tell you something. When I used to work on the street, people, a lot of girls always, they run it. And we go, bag of girls, and I'm saying, sing surely with the Diamond Ring. This, this is a serious thing. And I have to sing this tune. And them time I never have guitar and them things are too tough. But I know the tune. So we used to go up a man named um, Mr. Eddie, you know, who from Chocomode, having Ban and Slim Smith and Bob Marley and Jimmy Cliff and Alton. I used to go in a Ken boat. I was sing mm -hmm. Panic Band. You know, and Slim Smith and the man that played instrument, them and thing, right? And um, it's really from those eras that those development, you know, come forward, you know. My mother told me that in her church, <laughs> one there was uh, there was no um, man in the church. All the men them drop out, right? And they all went and fasted and pray for her son. And I was the one that was born. And she so when I born, the rest of the, the sister them in the church, every one of them called me them son. And she said, apart from that, when when you know every, every child born them slap the, the child for the child cry. And when them slap I, right? The way oh I cry, the, the nurse that, that you know said, What a beautiful voice this baby have. My mother said that. And she came me to show me the woman when I get a big youth and say, This is the lady. And I always remember that woman. So you know, these are things really from reality, you know. As I said, you know, my mother is just like many more, many more mothers in Jamaica, right? Who are really God people. Because once ago, there was no blues, you know, in Jamaica, you know. There was no dance. It was just those gospel people play them song on the street and them keep them meeting. And hundreds of people follow them. And it's out of those music that come for Jamaican music. It is true, it's reality. You know, so there's a, a there's a, a godly element about it. You had um, dealings with Alpha. Alpha. Cut his school. Tell me about that. Alpha. Yeah. Well, I, I my dealing with Alpha was the people, um, most of the youth them that used to go there, as 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 great musicians, right? Um, some of them youth the youth them used to come to Boystone School after a period of time, and realize that. A lot of talents was there. When I moved to East, because when I moved from West to East, I got to Rantan Town to live, right? And we still link up with most of them youths there. Because it was always my interest in, my interest to promote show, do recording and help people with them talent, you know? So that was really my link. But I never really have no personal link within the, the premises or so, where are the authorities now. Okay. So, yeah. So tell me about you, how you met with um, Kong. Where's the Kong? Yeah. Where's, where's the Kong now? After I say I, I wrote, wrote the song Shirley, right? And um, sing it on the street all the while and people like the tune. And I'm going and some people tell me about it. Say, 
the same Jimmy Cliff tell me says I must go up there cause Jimmy Cliff, him help Jimmy Cliff, him help Desmond Decker, him oh, help man. Bob Marley all the money, Derek Morgan. So them says in there for go. So when I go to the tune and sing it, him say this is one of the best vibes to me for my time. So him bring man like um Desmond Decker start verse the tune him. And bring sometime and bring a man named Kefless Beckford, you know, and um, carry me to the studio and record a tune. Well, when we record a song, I remember one day that Wesley Kang called me in the shop, in you know, the evening part, and the man come out and look down and up the street. Why never know says can I? What can I? And him give I ten pound, ten pound for the for the, for the music. That means he's, he's, he's still, he's still away that song. But him look up and down the street first to see if anybody has evidence. But I was so glad, you understand? Because I don't know about the, you know, the technical and the business side about it. So I keep this 10 pound in my pocket for about six, six weeks. And I never spend it. So glad. In those days, what could you get for 10 pounds? What could you buy for 10 pounds? Well, it, it's really... It, what year are we talking you, 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 Well, you could, buy some, you could buy a dinner for that. You could buy a couple, you could buy maybe two day dinner for that, Jamaica. No, I mean, you could get a shirt or so. But I mean, you know, Jamaica is always a place where them things sell expensive, you know. And especially the best to, for you to, to be slick. You have, have to spend 10 pounds, couldn't do nothing. But I was so really impressed, you understand, to know that was my first song I record, you know, the very first tune. And when I hear it start playing on the radio and all that, we are telling man that was something, man. So the same youth them used to stop me on the street and say, surely Diamond Ring and the tune start play on the radio. So that tune now was what again inspired me again, you know, for move on further and further on into my development, you know. How much how much do you think the song was worth then? If ten pounds wasn't wasn't good enough for Well I feel me should give me at least ten grand for a tune like that. Because that tune is sell enough. Cause when I come to England and tell me that he sell hundreds of um, thousands of copies because that's what they used to do. They make those, the song down there, press them, send up thousands of copies up here and the singers them don't know nothing. And sometimes they put a look maybe about a 50 in shop until they said running slow. Were other singers making money at the time? Were the other singers making a good living? No. The only singer I think was making money at the time was um, the singer from England here. With the name of Millie Smile. She did get a bligh. And I heard that she even get robbed up to. So we're talking what 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 part of this is sixties? Late sixties. Yeah, late sixties, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. telling yeah. Okay. So, so what, what was the music like? because uh, obviously going from, from ska to rock steady to what were into reggae then? Or... Yes, it moved into reggae and it moved into um it moved into well it it, 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 it stayed into rock steady for a while. And it could go to to reggae, and it it, it, it them just keep moving the, the, the sequence around it, cause you know when I time them start cut, then it becomes low as rock, and it becomes ragamuffin, you know one of them kind of different tempers. It becomes steppers, roots and culture, so many things come out of that, you know. You you um, you linked up with 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 Ken Blue in the early days, and then moved on and, and formed. Then you went back and, and, and did something with Errol Duncan. Tell me about that. Oh well, yes. Well, yes, Men Ken. What are we moving about? Yeah, yeah. Well, as I said, you know, Men Ken Boot used to sing a lot, and um, when Men Ken Boot sing, we used to call ourselves the, the the mighty Ken Boot and the great Ray Shirley. When me and him sing, uh, especially one night me and him was singing about half past three one morning, uh, a right time gate. And the mother come out in her in her bed clothes, and she said she have re she couldn't do no, she, she couldn't do no better. She have she said wanna sing that tune there again. I will sing that tune here in the Lord's prayer. Tear up the place and people, you know, and things. So me and Ken did, we, we, we form a group one at a time called um, the Leaders, and um, you know it never had too materialized because everybody had a different views and opinions and. I mean, the leaders, too much leaders there. So, me and Slim Smith now, after the techniques mashed up, formed a group named the Uniques, 
right? And then we, we sing a couple of songs, you know, me and him do a couple of tracks with like. Who was with it? Was like Tyrell there? Who? Like Chalmers? No, no, them man come out, them man come in the business long, long time after. Was he part of the Eunice? Uh, yeah, he, he becomes a part of the Eunice when, when, when he come out of it. Okay. But it's my so name. When I, 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 I originally formed a group with, with Slim, when Technique smash up. Okay. So me, Slim Summit, and uh, a singer, uh, one of the Technique's named um, Franklin Wright, who's an Indian chap from up King Street, right? That's where the Uniques farm from. And we inspired enough singer come inside there, you know, singer like uh, Jimmy Landon, you know, remember one and two names, you know, um, if we go back to them names, we'll have to stand back from record for identify them. But when we used to rehearse, um, we inspired people also like Dennis Brown, the man to get them chances to us. Enough, enough people may slim help, you know. And slim was really a musical brother too. He never really biased for them talent, you know. And he always helpful. But frankly now, was the guy who played the guitar for us. A great guitarist, you know, seeing. Why did the group break up? Well, I think them things come, them things make up around um, about 69, 70s, around the, the unique thing there. Because uh, them, them here, there, nothing happened to them here, there, right? And then I, as I said, leave the group there. And the reason why I left the group, each time that we set our part, our time to rehearse, there's a crowd of people coming there, like a stage show. And this yard that we are talking about is a big yard like McDonald's. So people just come and build out spliff and every man just name him song when he want. So we, we couldn't, Making materials, new songs, you know. We only inspired people. People just take away the idea. So who were you recording for them? You no, at the time we were at the time we were trying to at the time we would have seen for anybody. But there was a man named um, uh, Calton that we sing a few songs for him. Like um we do some song for him but um I think um Do Good. It's a nice ballad, back up by Tamma Cook and the man there. And we, we do some we do, we do some track for a guy named uh, JJ. He died now. Um, Evil Love, them tracks there. And um, we do an extract name um, Journey. I'm on a long journey. I think that was called to song too. And the, you know the group really w was such a great group. You know, it's a pity that we didn't get a chance to accomplish. So, um, yeah, me and them do a tune know also named Facts of Life. We did that for Bonnie Lee. You know? Yes. Yeah. As you mentioned Bunny Lee, tell, tell, tell me about um, you introducing Bunny Lee to the music. The music business. Super. Well Bunny Lee played a great part in Jamaica music development. Like me and Man Slim. Cause you know, it's me and Slim Smith really responsible for bring the, the, the music you know, originality to Jamaica. Reggae music, ska music. I mean not even not ska. But from from rock steady, go moving on. And Slim play a lot of part there. No. Why do you say that? Well, um, Slim Will was the Slim was really ahead at the whole thing. Even in ska, Slim was one of the best ska singer. Even amongst Prince Boston, Dirk Morgan, we take it out, take a, check it out. It's true. Vice and thing and man did that them group, you know, and them sing some nice tune like Liquid Did You Know. Cox uh, for Joe, Joe Creed. It's like a song for Joe Creed, right? And things like that, right? So, Slim was really ahead of that, right? So when I come now, I too, I come with the rock steady. You understand? That was another dimension now. Where we open the whole gate now. Because when me come to the music now, it's like me come inspired enough people and show them, but we can't do that too. You know, and promoters now, who didn't have no idea about making um, rock steady. Everybody start running on them two cars there. Because the two cars are so easy for play. Okay. You know? So I don't... Well, you're many songs. I remember uh, there was a man named, um, there's a man named, um, Family Man, who used to, they used to work with Bob Marley. Because Bob Marley take away them chapter from IT, you know? Because the man used to work with me, do no shows. I tell you that. I asked them, Carol Man, I still have a record now, but them play for me. You know, Peter taught you to play guitar for me too. I had some tracks when play and thing, you know. And the man who lived good with me, you know. So, we always, we live as family, you know what I mean? No problem. 
I remember I was doing a show one night down in Ward Theatre and with Bob Marley and, and um, I had three girls dancing with me. And the people them loved me and the girl them on the stage. Very much, right? And when I came up the stage and went in the changing room, Bob went on next. And when I looked on the stage, who I see? My three girls out there, Bob. No, it's not a joke business, you know. And I just looked at that and said, well, there's no way I would have do that to my fellow human beings. I'd, I'd rather come to you and ask you and tell us that I'm going to do. But because of my um, talent and inspiration, you know, people always see most of my talent as something for just take away or borrow or fear take all of them. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm just a peaceful, loving brother. So... It never really worried me still, you know, but I looked through that and, you know, when I, we, when I come to England here and people said to me that um, Bob Marley take on my shop when me and stranger called it an art period. I say, yeah, man, I'm on it. enough things, everything me, me inspired. The brother there go through it, but I love it still, you know. But I think those things happen for a reason because Bob still come and play a part still, a very great part. So my shop and them girls there did play them part also. Music field was another big hit of yours. A song that, that certainly helped to um, hold you in, in, in high esteem. Well, yes. That is Bonnie Lee first tune, too. We went to Duke with an hour to get, get, get in the studio to do that. We didn't have no money. So I went to my producer, which is um, the same Carlton. And Carlton lent me £10. Remember that? Bonley went to Duke Reed and Duke Reed said we can get at least two or three hours in them studio. Time when Duke was more close, you know. So I get some singer, some musician like um, Lynn Tate, John Biego, and Gladstone Wilson and, and Piano, and sing this tune here. Gladi Anderson. Mm -hmm. But the first, the first take that we, we, we make in the studio, you know, everybody was dancing so merrily. And I'm saying, yeah, man, why you make another hit again? And the, the producer, the, not the producer, the man who was doing the engineering. The other thing in Jamaica at the time, that if you sing in a good tune into a next man's studio, and it's not that, and it's not the man for the studio song, the engineer is supposed to damage it somewhere around. It's true, curry fever, it's happened many times. So, when everybody know things says I eat and we sing the tune down, and go around and the brother said never record it. Imagine how we felt, you know. So, it, it, it was a big disappointment to the heart. But it was a good song, you know. So, we did another version of it. Although that spirit and zeal, you understand? Well, yeah, again, but it was very close to it. So, that, that was a tune, too, that helped the kick off Bunley and start him label, you know. Oh yes, Lin Tate is a man born the same month like me. And he's a man who feed off idea. So my idea, anytime you have an idea and tell Lin Tate, you know, it's like a it's like a looking glass, I'm just going at it. You know, some always like when you come up and say, I'm a I'm a original man and Lin Tate is a original player too. And to my all is fitting. I was in the original world, you know, and dropped something in it and one of the greatest guitarists that me here. Apart from uh, Ernest Ranglin, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. And Drop Beaver, of course, was on that track as well. Oh, yes. Drum Beaver, well, is, is that, as I said, create the one drop. Because I had to create the. As I said, scale was a problem. So the only thing I could do is find a one drop, you know? One drop. And Drum Beaver was a man that. He was in England here for about 20 odd years. So he was a proper musician. He have a thing like when he rolled to four beat. It's all 16 different sounds you get. Because so, a jazz man, you know. And imagine him play them thing there. And sure, he's one of the greatest singers, that musician at me here, man. Every singer him, 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 him play with, him eat them up. From Jimmy Cliff, name it. Every man him play with. 
Him eat. There's one day call of them. Oh well. Well, it's right now. <laughs> we got to go to music for you. No, you got to go. Don't ever be late. Get on board. Come down music field. Get on board. Come down music field. And oh, you got to go now. You got to go now, 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 now. Up and down, down, down. Go on the music, music, music. You got to go now. You got to go. Music feel. Now you got to go to music lane. Now you got to go. Don't ever be late. Mm. Number one for, um, for Bonnie Lee. Yeah, man, I'm too. Bonnie is a great guy, man. Do enough great and help enough people to own the business and enough respect for him like that, you know. Mm. I mean, our next man, too, that's a great man, too, is to me, was a man named Byron Lee. Byron, Byron Lee. Mm -hmm. Because Byron Lee, you know, was the man who took me all over the island and give me my first television show. And the way it happens, I they used to have a thing in Jamaica named Lalamans. No, uh, Nugget for the Needy. Yeah. So, yeah, every time you sing, the, the money go to the, the poor youths them, right? Well, I tried this thing after about two years. I have a man named Running as Rally. We keep telling me, say, no, because them time they have blue busters and them man that bought it up. Yeah, so when I went up to Regal Theatre, he said, you again? He said, you could be Lord Jesus Christ, you can't work on the show. That him tell me, you know. I said, boy, I imagine, the man never hear me sing yet. But him know, you understand me, I try to forget another thing, right? So I went back to Dynamic Studio. And like, was a spirit. As was he coming out of the studio? Mr. Lee, Baron Lee. And him, as he looked at my face, he said, them don't want you to sing on the show. I say, yes, I see them thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going all the way. I say, sit down in the car. And we didn't say a word more. I came straight up to Ronnie Laz Rally. And I say, I say, this youth don't sing. Me, Baron Lee, now play on the show. So it shook the man. Because me, now I'm not name them time. It just, how that happened. But as I said, too, you know, the, the Siago thing and the dynamics thing and my man and Jimmy Cliff and them know me have a talent, right? Because more time I get a little chance to get in from the television and people know that, right? And go sing a tune about this heartbreaking gypsy. It's been a king thing. I mash up the place I have. All know people are true money. So we are even thinking now because I meet some people the other day um, who said to me that we should try, I should really try to re-establish back that um, establishment in Jamaica. And I'm so since that um, that project um, get out, uh, it's no more. It creates a lot of suffering amongst sing, the young youths them. Cause the, the government, the finance, them have a bit a problem. So this would have helped. And through during that time, you find so much foreigners yeah, have left and abroad. We definitely support that. So we're working hard in this year and hopefully that um, with a bit of help and support and management, you know. I will really get this thing going again. You, you've always been a charity uh, sort of person. Well, you can see that's how I born, you know. I born with a good heart. And you see, it's always good to have a good heart more than a bad one. Where, well, tell me how about your, your stage show? Because your, your stage presence, you know, it, without a doubt, it's, it's, uh, it's unbelievable, questionable. Where did this um, costume come from? The tallest color in the business, as they used to call it. The high priest of red. Mm. Yes, well, there's a man named, uh, it's a radio announcer by the name of Jeff Barnes. He was one of Jamaica's greatest um, 
radio nonsense at the time from RGR. And he put on this thing about um, the high priest, right? Okay, because I say I sing soul, you know. Because the way I sing my soul, you know, more time people cry in you know, the thing, you know, the show them and thing, and people just stand up and cry, you know. And sometimes tears come out of my eyes too. So it's, it, it's more time people might think say, it's something I just make up. But for a man to just make up, to go and cry, live in high water, that can be, it can be a, a rare thing. So it's a soul, soul come out of me. I'm a soulful man, you know. You feel yourself. Yeah, man, I feel that. And yeah. when I see the people I'm crying to, it, it, come, it, it come over more, you know, and things. So it's really not. So the, 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 what, what come forward now to, to the, um, the, the eye color? I did some show with some star named um, the, the Four Tops. And um, everybody said the Four Tops, I was still the show. Because you know the man is an American star and them big, you know. I said, well, I have to do something to counteract this. So I think, and I said, well, if them man named Four Tops, why Shadow is coming with an eye color? You understand? So that makes sense because four tops are my, my color eye, a top color. So I just build up a top color and go there and mash up the show that I even know them. So when four tops park the backstage and I peep when I'm on the pan stage, that when I come off of the stage, they try to take me to America with them. But for some reason, it band, you know, in those days, don't want a singer who come forward to just leave them like that, you know. So it didn't, it was encouraged. But the guy did say to the leader, he said, we'd like to take you back to the States, you know. But, you know, it's one of those things, you know. But I did reach the state anyhow, even without them tech there. Yeah. One thing you're famous for is your interpretation of, as you say, um, R&B and st standards, you know, um, some like endlessly, I can't stop loving you and, and, and some like those. Um, how, how do you go about actually putting your own stamp on, on a music like that? Well, those songs have souls in them. And any songs that have soul in them always going to be a part of me. Because it bring out that soul to me and then it create that attraction. You understand? You know, honestly, it's like matches and, and a stove, you know what I mean? Them blend together, really. So that's, it's a serious thing, you know? So songs like that really, and the, the thing that helps me with those songs also, right? They are ballad, ballad written. So two eyes as I love singing soul to, it for me was to take those songs and push them back into reggae and ska. It was quite easy because I didn't come out of the, the ballad trend. It was the beat change, you know? So, so for instance, I mean, I can't stop loving you. Good song done by um, Ray Charles, but you, you, you kind of do it in your inevitable style. Well, yes, them, them tune it, them, and sometimes them tune it have set up to, honestly, to certain um, orchestras and have it properly arranged and rehearse out properly, you know, proper band and thing I play because them tune it, them play upon some very technical cards. But again, that song was a song I grew with, you know, and I remember. It used to play so much when I look a boy, you know. I people in the bars, them play it and always I play this tune. So I grew and loved them tune. Eh? And I always say, boy, I want you to like record that tune. You know? And I'm, when I get the chance to, to really do the song, it was a woman in, the, in Canada did some show there. And um, honestly, she bring the inspiration to me. So when I finished the show, it was really a good show. And she came to me and she started singing. But she sound like, um, we call it um, Diana Ross. I said, where are you the voice of? <laughs> and she said, you know, she do like when I come back to England to write a couple tracks and send them in and this or something from gear. That was one of the tracks she talked about. So what I did, I said, well, since that tune I did love, you understand? Make I put my vocal on it and lead her into the tempo. But for some reason, the relationship broke down because she was supposed to pay something for flight out and she, it, it didn't happen. So I just put it out myself, you know. But for some reason, 
um, I've got the backing tracks. And um, I hopefully one day I'll get that woman advice on it also to do her version of it, you know. Gypsy Woman is one of the most requested songs. Yeah, Gypsy Woman was a tune at, um, I don't, I don't, Jamaican people just love that tune. They used to use me in, in Jamaica, right? To star, I'll show them. It is true. And if you don't have right show, you don't know how to show them. It don't crowd, no crowd no coming out of the place. So when the big star them come there, them always fit me in. So them always have to use me at the later part of the show. Because when me don't see people stop just walk and come out of the place, it happened many, many times. And it, it was upsetting to a lot of singer. A singer think was something that I, I set up or I go on, you know. And sometimes they move me up and say, right, right, well, go this up. The same thing happened. It's like one time I went to America, similar to this, was doing a show at the Apollo Theater. And when I went to the Apollo Theater, I was seeing this tune stand by me. There was a man on it named Mighty Sparrow. You know, Mighty Sparrow's a big star. But he was a star of the show. But every time he don't sing, the people him stand up and still clap for about nine shows straight and for bring me back. Standing up, it's not a joke, you know. Them say more, more, more. That even um, the same man that I'm um, right talking about. What's name again? We just call him name. Marilyn? No, man, not Marilyn, man. The, the Calypso singer, the man. Oh. Sparrow. 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 He's born behind the back of the screen. When we up on the stage, you know, because we just sing with a band name, um, Skin, Skin, Flesh, and Bone. I think that was Sly and Sly now. Sly name Sly, but he was Sly at the time, right? And some other man are playing thing. But they must skin flesh and bone at the time. They must play on the show, right? And Mighty Spur get upset. And he said to the producer, what I heard, who is a Jamaican singer, you call him Mash Not Big Mighty Spur thing. And he said, no, make, and him, all right, he said, the brothers will be here for work up front because Sparrow have problem, problems. It's the same thing happened. When I finish seeing the people, I'm saying, why? Even we don't sing. When I came back to England here, the manager for the theatre wrote me a letter and he said, we should try to come back in America because the people I'm really love me because it was one of the first Jamaican artists that come here that really impressed the American crowd. It is true. It's not a joke business, this, you know? So I, I, I know that I, I'm a gifted man, you know? But I don't recall exalt myself because when a man exalt himself, becomes a beast. I've always humbled myself. What I try to do when I'm doing my work, I do it to people's expectation and to the best of my ability. You know? Why didn't you settle in America? Why didn't you go live in America? Well, you know, America, again, to America is like many parts of the world. When you're an artist, that is too good, you understand? Your life is in danger. Because some run around a man going shot you or do something. And I, I know you know the gun business. Because I'd have to go really go on and set up and like puff daddy and the man then walk away with a bodyguard and shut up some guys and you know them things. Eh? But as I say, he's a, he's a peaceful, loving singer. So I want to sing where there's peace and love. You know what I mean? That, that way, the song can go where the violence are and eventually erase it out or delete it. Most of your songs seem to be about love. Well, yeah. You know, love conquer everything, you know. And my, my terms of love is not just a thing where a man has got to bear with a girl, right? I'm talking about love, you know. Harmony, love in, within the community. Love your family. Love your brother and sister. Because the first thing is to have love. But love make the world and love keep the world going. And that's the love I deal with, you know? So I, I have to just leave that way there. Tell about the music love. I'm a writer to about it. Music love. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? You have a song called Music is the Key. Mm. Why do you think music is the key? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, look, 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 that's uh, fierce reality, right? Where there's no music, right? You know, the people it becomes that must be a, that must be a, a, a it's madness. If there was no mu music in the world, right? You just have so much 
people going mad, crazy, no communication. It's true. And I think about that lyrics good. And I said, but music is really key. I think music makes the world. Music, music is another part of love and the, the, the music is, is really the key. Because every day that you see, it carries sounds within the wind as a different, different key. Music is the key, man. There can't be no other key more than music to the world. And if you take away music from the world, I, I think the earth that just sink. Can music keep the thing afloat? A serious talk. How many songs do you think you've written? Well, I've, I've written over 100 singers. And I, I think I've gone over two, three hundred two now. Plus some of them never released yet. You know, I've done quite a lot of songs, you know, and it's surprising to a lot of people. And um, you see, what I really need now at the moment, right, is just to have um, some fields of, um, what do you call it, um, in, in universal uh, outlet. I want, I want more universal outlet towards distribution, right? Because I've been ripped off so many times in the past. Sometimes I get scared from carry a thing to carry a music to a promoter because you know there's no difference between them. So I'm really trying to set my own label up. And um at the moment I'm trying to set up this label by the name of King Roy Music Enterprise. And hopefully from that music I'll be able to help a lot of singers, both in reggae, R and B, soul, gospel. Down to African music or jazz, anything you come with, go up on my label. Because, you know, since I come to England here, one of the things I look through and I see that I think a lot of singers been starved about, right? You don't really have a real station set up to inspire the singer for those carry tune going on and play it. It's an optical view that is concerned. And um, I don't know if we the singer will have to do that. But I hope at some stages that one of these government will look through that. Because that, that is something really needed. That would really create so many great chances, you know. You know, because I youth might take him last hundred pounds and work a little thing on him CD, put it that way, right? The next thing he need three, four grand. I'm gonna get that. So sometimes I'm youth to turn to all crimes and do some vicious things. Can we really want to find all the money to put out them tune? Which if it have prevent is better than cure. If the government have something like that now, right? Carry the music in. Give it the chance. Play it. I make the people in here and say, well, we don't like that or we like that one. I think that's what we really needed. What, what motivates you these days? Pardon? What's, what, what motivates you? What's your motivation these days? Well, my motivation to be honest with you, is to, well, it's many things motivate me at the moment, right? What, what motivates me most of all, right, is the changes of the music, right? I love that, because to every time the music change, you understand? It gives me more motivation, you understand? And more satisfaction within myself to see how great music are, you know, that it, it starts to sheer up in so many different years and chapters, you know. So that is really one of my greatest motivation at the moment. You know, the changes of music. I can't stop loving you, huh? <laughs> see, see. You know. <laughs>